afternoon, YouTube. Um, so today is Wednesday, September 12th, and I did not vlog yesterday. I did in my classroom, but I didn't personally vlog. I vlogged some things that happened in the classroom and some things that we, some activities um, that I'm going to do, like as a math um, activity that we did. Um, but I didn't personally vlog, and that is because if you're a teacher or a parent even, you know that some days are just super, super hard. And that was yesterday. Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics because it really doesn't matter. It was just a super hard day. And um, so today I had some things that I wanted to share that I'm working on. I also wanted to share with you some of the breakthroughs that we've had and it's been great. Um, my class today were phenomenal. Um, we are still doing M class <clears throat> and I'm getting at that point now that I'm, I'm getting very anxious about that because I'm ready to get to the meat of learning. I'm ready to be teaching them all of these skills and pull out all of the magic that happens in the classroom. And I feel like I'm kind of stuck until I can get finished with this M class. Um, I have probably, I would say, a little bit less than half my class finished. So, um, and I have 23 students, so it's still, we're not like on the home stretch yet, but I'm certainly getting there. I'm starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't feel like that I have to devote every second to M class. Um, this afternoon, I did a lot of M class, like I was able to see it. And when I say a lot, I don't mean a lot of students, just a lot of time devoted to three, I think three or four <coughs> that I got completed this afternoon. Um, and I felt pretty good about that because I could sit with them. I felt like I had time. My kids were working beautifully. We did all of our math in the morning and then they did their math mat. Um, by themselves after. Now I had quite a few that didn't understand it, but for the most part, like I had 11 who got everything right on it. And then I had about five more who just kind of got confused on a couple of problems, which is a big accomplishment. So with that only leaves like the couple stragglers that I just need to meet with and regroup and teach it a different way. And it could just be that they didn't understand what the math math was asking them to do. However, everybody finished their math math, so that's a huge accomplishment compared to what we've had. Um, the other thing is I got all of my star math, all of my star reading, so I'm, this afternoon I'm trying to put my, my kiddos into groups. And with my groups, because I do a very I don't even want to call it guided math because it probably is not guided math by anybody else's rules except for mine because I don't have a stringent rule with who I call and when I call them and how I call them like I do with my reading. Reading, I have a, a stringent, this is the way that I'm going to call you, this is how I'm going to call you, you are always going to come with this group until I tell you that you're changed. Math is not really like that. And it's so fluid from even day to day, you might understand the math we did today and you didn't understand it yesterday. So you might have to be pulled with all different groups. So my math groups are just very fluid. I do have set groups. I name them groups. This year I'm gonna name them Ocean Names. Um, since we're doing an ocean theme in my classroom. Um, but yeah, they don't always pull that way. And I don't always, I don't always try to make sure that I pull groups every day if I don't need to. <laughs> um, if they would be more beneficial to do things independently, then by all means, I'm going to let them do it independently. I do pull them a lot to my table to do like a quick check so that I can tell if they understand what I'm doing, if they're doing it the right way. I mean, it could be they're doing it totally wrong and I need to check up with them on that or they have a misunderstanding that I need to clear up. I also use my group time as a time to 
not remediate the ones that need help, but to challenge the ones that are maybe have that higher thinking to push their thinking even further. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about, something that I'm working on. So I'm sure, especially if you're in North Carolina, um, we've revised the Common Core. We've revised this, the curriculum, added some things, taken out some things, changed some things. And um, I've had these kind of question stems before and we got these again, and, and you probably are familiar with the mathematical practices. You probably have that poster hanging up somewhere in your classroom about how you should push students through to answer questions. And we've done these a lot, and I've done these in my math class. These are great for math talks when you're trying to get them to think deeper about what they do. And that's one of the things that I don't like about Envisions and if you like Envisions, I'm sorry, but I just have a hard time with Envisions. I feel like that they haphazardly teach the skills. I also feel like that they jump around too much. Like we're getting ready next week to start subtraction, but I don't feel like my kids have mastered addition. And now we're throwing a whole new thing in there so I feel like if they mastered addition before we jumped into subtraction, that would certainly make it easier for the kids to understand and not to be so, I don't know what I'm doing kind of thing and not be secure with their knowledge because that's what we want kids to be. We want them to be secure with the knowledge they have so that they have the ability to dig deeper when we ask them instead of not even being sure about the answer to two plus two. They know two plus two. Um, so anyway, I'm taking these questions, and I'm also doing it for the M-Class stems, um, if you're familiar with those. We have the same kind of format for the M-Class, the levels, and what questions that would help them. Of course, now that our questions have changed in M-Class, I'm sure those will change as well. Um, but I'm going to make little sticks, and I have those straws. In fact, I shared them in one of my earlier vlogs. Um, these are the black and white ones, and I'm going to get some more. But I have these sticks, and I have my little um, tins, and I'm going to put these in there with the questions on the top of them. And I actually probably am going to cut each one of these in half so they are a little bit shorter because I just need the top part of it. I don't need the whole, I don't need it to be that long. Um, but it just gives it a cute way, eye attention, getting, eye, eye getting attention, whatever. You know what I mean. Um, class. Yes. Class, class. Yes. Okay, on your desk, you should have two towers of ten cubes. So they should be side by side, two towers of ten cubes. Does everybody have that? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do this up here with mine, and you're going to do the same thing as mine first. Then you're going to get to do it on your own at your seat with your with your dice because at first we're going to use my dice we're going to use whatever my dice say and then you can do it with yours okay so there's my red tin and then let me put together my green tin make sure i have green y'all can double check me i mean that i have tin not that i have green i do have green they just might not be 10 of them Now, yesterday, in our math class, we talked about making number sentences and making number sentences that equal a number. And we knew that we had expressions that were just two numbers that we were adding together. And then we had the whole sentence that had the addition sign and the equal sign. So then we had a part, a part, and then we had the whole, right? Well, we're gonna use these to help us. <laughs> Hands and eyes. Some of you. Okay, so I am going to. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, one of mine fell off. So I'm gonna take 
No, it won't stick. It must be a different type because it won't stay on. That's why it keeps falling. Okay, so I have two different sets of 10. So I am going to roll my dice. Now, my dice aren't in a container. Like yours are in a container. You're not going to take yours out. But mine are just going to roll my dice. And then here's what I'm going to do. I have to take my dice and I have to match. Oh, you can't see them. I have to take my dice and make sure that my cubes match my dice. So take one color of your cubes, take it in your hand, and you're going to get just one of the cubes. And then put the rest of it up in your ditch or up at the top of your desk. Just one. And put it in the middle of your desk. And then what's our other number? Six. So watch what we're going to do. We're not going to clip six apart. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to clip that apart right there. Then you're going to take this and you're going to clip it to the other piece. Okay, now here's the next step to this. Some of you, some of you may have to do this with paper and pencil and not get to use the cubes because you're not following directions and you're not making good choices. So if you want to keep doing it this way, instead of the paper pencil way, then you have to show me respect, right? Yeah. You have to do it the way that I'm asking you to do it. So this is the fun part. This is the part that you're gonna get to do on your kid doodle. Yeah. So instead of pencil and paper, we're gonna use kid doodle to write these problems. So we're not doing this for this one. I'm gonna write it up here, but this is what you're gonna write. Are you ready? Yeah. So when you use your kid doodle, you're gonna get on there and you're gonna have, what's my first number? One. One. Two. Plus. What's that math problem? Good. And what does that equal? Perfect. You can do it again. What did you make? What did you make? I made five and six. And what does that equal? Can you count on and tell me? Eleven. Perfect. And what did you make? Six and six is twelve. Good. What did you make? I made. We gotta make a stick. We have to make a make a stick. Okay. So what did you make? Do we do it? Yeah. You do it again. Three and three and four equals seven. Good. Four. What did you make? Um. Three and three. Wait. It has to be these numbers. I think you need to start all over. Try it again. What did you make? And what does that equal? Okay, go. Okay, what did you make? What did you make? Well, 
Are you sure? Look at it carefully. Try it again. And what does that equal? Count on and tell me. Good, good. What did you make? But what, what numbers? Two and five. Um, two, two, and, two, and two and six. Two and six. Good. What did you make? Four and six. Okay, did you make it with this, though? Make it with your cubes. No. So you should have four. And then, <laughs> and then six. And now what does that equal? Perfect. Do it again. Keep going. Keep going. What'd you make? I made two and three. What is it? I said I made two and three. And how much does that equal? Okay. So they're rolling their dice. And then they're making their numbers and then putting them on a program called Kid Doodle. Backward six. You wrote a backward six? Yes, but whatever. <laughs> it's still a six. It's still a six. You're right, as long as you know it. Because I'm not taking these up. Keep working. Do more. Roll this again. Make those numbers. Keep going. Roll those and make your numbers. Video legal. Okay, I won't. That's fine. You can video on the iPad. Good job. I like how some of you are working so hard. Good. Did you make that? Right there it is. That is perfect. Very good. Very good. Good job. Very good. I like it. Are you keep making them? Keep making them. Make that problem. Can you write that problem on there? And tug of war. Oh, hang on. Show me what you look like when you pull tug of war. Show me the faces. Oh, you're pulling so hard. Oh, that is perfect. I love it. <clears throat> so back to what I was saying. The janitor had to come in and um, clean up her room and she's new. So I was wanting to visit with her and um, introduce myself. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to cut these in half, and then I'm going to attach, I've made these cute little labels, and um, put a little border around them with different colors, so I could keep track of, like if it's math, each one of these practices have their own set of questions, so then each one of these, I put their background a different set um, a different color set and then the same thing with the reading and I have different colored straws for them so if they do get switched from their bucket I'll be able to tell the difference I have blue straws I have these straws and I don't really remember what other color I really wanted purple but couldn't find it anywhere um, so that's one of the things that I'm working on I am gonna put this in my TPT store whenever that I get those made um, I'm also working on, I know I promised all my labels, but I'm still like labeling things. So I feel like until I finish labeling things, um, I'm not going to really, um, put, post all that. And that's not really my expertise. I mean, I label the things in here, but I'm not, that's not really what my TPT store is. So that's not like, I guess it's not just my passion, um, to be a labeler like some people like love to make those labels and that is their TPT store and that's great because we all need that. Um, mine is more like what am I going to use today and how can I make that work? I'm also going to start, uh, Seesaw. I'm going to start that tomorrow and I'm going to make some activities that go along with these that they can do in Seesaw and I don't know how that works if I can put that on TPT like would it be an activity I don't know if you know like how that would be but I am gonna make them so um, if I can't put it on TPT I guess I'll share it and share um, somehow that I can share it with you 
if I can, then I'll figure out how to put it on TPT. Um, I also, I'm not sure if I told you, because I can't remember, I'm, it's been crazy. I got a printer, and I've been working. Oh, I think I did show you, because of my cute little printer. Um, so the tech guy came yesterday, set it up on the new network, and I still can't get it set up to Instant Ink. And I'm super upset about this, because that's the whole purpose. Well, not the whole purpose, but I bought an HP. I have a really good brother printer at home. Really good. Love it. It prints, it scans, it copies. It'll do like the whole nine yards. And then I decided since my brother black and white one worked so well and it made so many copies that I would use that, I would do that same brand and get the colored version of it. And so I saved up my money. This was like two or three years ago and saved up my money and got that printer and I love it. It is phenomenal. However, it takes toner, so to replace the toner, now they last forever. I mean, they last a really long time with it just me printing. Now, if it were here, um, and more than just me were using it, it probably wouldn't, but with just me, and I don't print an astronomical amount on it, it lasts a really long time. But the toner is super expensive whenever that I have to replace it. Like the black one is only about $30, but each one of the colored ones, and I think there's four of them, are like $40 a piece. That gets a little bit pricey when you have to replace them all. So I wanted to get the instant ink so that I could pay $9.95 or $9.99 or how much ever, $10 basically a month and be able to print 300 pages for that price and they would send me the cartridges. So I searched on Amazon and found not just a printer that would work, but a purple printer that would work and actually works really well um, because it matches my room and then I could bring it in here and it looks all cute and it's just adding to the ambiance of my room. So then when I tried Tuesday, Monday, to try to get it set up. I spent like my whole afternoon trying to get it set up. Couldn't get it set up. And then yesterday, tech guy came by because I sent in a tech request. And he set it up and it did exactly the same email, the same amount of characters. They were telling me my IP address was wrong. The HP was telling me this, that my IP address was wrong or that it was a guest and that it would not work because... Uh, it was the, a guest network and so he set it up on our different network which is the same IP address and it's still doing the same thing so I don't even know what to do to get it to set up I'm gonna try one more time calling like on the phone HP and see if I can get it set up and I guess if I can't get it set up that way I'll just have to take it home and use my beautiful purple printer at my house instead of in my beautiful purple classroom, um, which does kind of upset me. Not that I can't use it at home, but I just wanted the convenience of being able to print stuff from my classroom um, because I have a good printer at home, so I didn't really need an, another one. Um, but what ifs, I'll just make it work. And I guess I could bring my big one here since it's not really, it doesn't really have to be hooked up to the network and um, use it like in a pinch here and then print my 300 pages at home. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. It kind of upsets me. I'm hoping I can get it working. Um, but if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. And if you are in North or South Carolina and you are in the line of the hurricane, please be safe. Please take precautions. I know everybody is preparing for that and um, it can be super scary, especially if you're not prepared. So I pray for everybody's safety. And like we've already gotten messages from the superintendent that, you know, schools can be used as places of shelter. So even if you're not in the direct line of the storm, um, you still could be affected by that and schools could be canceled or delayed or whatever. And we just have to be flexible with that. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you join me. And that way you get notifications of when I upload new videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.